Hello, today we're going to look at microscopy or have an introduction to microscopy and we're going to look at the kinds of measurements that we use when we're dealing with objects that we see through microscopes. Now, before we do that, just a very quick history of the development of microscopes. Right about 1200, we're looking at the first kind of eyeglasses, but go on by another 300 years and that's when we see the first microscopes. And the first microscopes were single lens microscopes, basically a lens in a tube. And if you had a good one, maybe you were able to see objects that were about 50 times bigger than in real life. So a magnification of about times 50. Go forward by another 100 years and we see the development of what we call compound microscopes. And these are microscopes that had two lenses. And by the mid 1600s, we saw the first cells. And in fact, the first person to see cells was somebody called Robert Hooke, and he was a person that actually coined the term cell when he looked at cork under a microscope. Go forward by another about 300 years, and we're looking at the development of some very, 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 very powerful microscopes called electron microscopes. These were very powerful because they had very high magnification, or they have very high magnification, but not only high magnification, they also have something that's called high resolution as well. And high resolution allows for much more clarity when you're looking at objects under the, this type of microscope. So if we just take an example, if we have an object that we're looking at here, we can magnify this object. And you can see it's kind of uh, fuzzy around the edges. We're not quite sure of the exact shapes. But if we look under an electron microscope, we can not only magnify many, many more times, but we have a much sharper and clearer image as well. And this gives us a much better idea of the kinds of objects that you can find inside cells and their function. So it's led to the discovery of a lot more kind of subcellular structures and what they do. Electron microscopes can magnify up to about 500,000 times, whereas your light microscope, the kind of microscope you have in school, that's only probably around about 1,500 times magnification. Okay, so that's just an overview of the development of microscopes, but what we want to look at now is the kind of units that we use when we're dealing with objects that we see under a microscope. So on the screen there, I've got uh, a bunch of noughts with a decimal place there just to give us an idea, and you'll see how that works in a minute. But if I'm writing down meters, I write it down on the far left side, so I could write down 1.0 meters, and that's where I'd write it. If I took a one meter length and sliced it up into a thousand pieces, that would then give us much smaller units, and those units would be our millimetres. So our millimetres are there on our decimal scale. To, uh, cut into another thousand pieces, and then we get micrometres. Cut the micrometres again into another thousand pieces, and we get what we call nanometres. So these are our micrometres, and nm there is our nanometres. If we sliced our nanometres into another yet another thousand pieces, we would then get our picometres. So you can imagine picometers are very, very, very tiny. In fact, if you were to write out picometers in meters, you'd have to write it like this. So you'd have 0 0.000000001 meters. Okay, so that's um, quite a long way to write it, but we can write it like this because it's very tiny. However, having said that, an easier way to write it would be using what we call standard form. So if you look at our millimetres, these are written as 10 to the minus 3, or 1 times 10 to the minus 3 metres. Our micrometres would be written as 10 to the minus 6, nanometres 10 to the minus 9, and picometres as 10 to the minus 12. It's a much shorter way of writing the very tiny numbers that we deal with in microscopes. To give us an idea of what kind of objects we have, at those various sizes. We've got an atom there, you might faintly be, be able to see that, but atoms are around about 10 to the minus 10 meters, viruses around about 10 to the minus 7 or minus 8, bacteria tend to be around about the 10 to the minus 6, uh, next is our is a red blood cell, around about 10 to the minus 5, these are all kind of approximate sizes, a hair width 10 to the minus 4, and a coin there you can see around about 10 to the minus 2 meters. Okay, so these are the kinds of sizes of objects you would see at the various um, different units. Our light microscope approximately allows us to see between 10 to the minus 4, say, and 10 to the minus 6 or 7. 
whereas our electron microscope allows us to see much smaller objects that range from around about maybe 10 to the minus 5 or 6 down to about 10 to the minus 9 or minus 10, as you can see there on the diagram. Okay, so um, this is an introduction into the kinds of sizes of objects that we see under the microscopes and the kind of units that we'll be using. I should add here actually that meters is not is not we're not dividing meters to get millimeters we're cutting into a thousand pieces to get our millimeters we'll be doing calculations involving uh, standard form and these kinds of tiny units in a future video when we look at um, the calculations we need to do but for now that's our video as an introduction to microscopy and units when looking at tiny objects through microscopes thank you for watching and i'll see you very soon